Thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa Francis. Right now, Verizon Wireless is rolling out Brew-enabled cell phones. Brew is software that allows consumers to use multimedia-rich applications like games and lets users share files. In a few moments, we'll take a closer look at one of these phones currently being developed by Verizon. Joining us now is John Maxwell of Summit. Your group teamed up with Verizon to create this Brew phone. Show us some of the features. Thank you very much. Yeah, the the, um, the Verizon Z800 phone that I have with me here is running the Exigo application. What Exigo allows you to do is move, store, send, and share all kinds of files. So spreadsheets, documents, presentations, and uh, even photos wherever, whenever you need it. And so one of the one of the uh, neat features that we have is the ability to view photos. And so you'll go into a, a section of the application we call My Media, and My Media is where you store all this information actually on your own site. Uh, on the internet and then you can download that to the phone and view, view your pictures and so if we take a look at some of these sample pictures here we have in the folder um, we're using blue fuel which is the architecture that uh, Exigo runs on to download these very quickly and smoothly over a 2G wireless network. How are these applications a better fit with Brew rather than Java? Um, actually these uh, the application Exigo uh, will run in any environment. We've already announced our uh, uh, pocket PC port and certainly will be running under J2ME as well. So you develop for Java as well? Absolutely. So why then Brew in this case or what difference does it make? Well, Qualcomm did a great job of giving us a head start with Brew. They had a very well developed model, a billing model, and uh, the carriers stepped up, uh, including Verizon, to give us great distribution. So um, that was, gave us a great head start with Brew, but we're very excited to move forward with uh, multiple platforms in the future. So you're obviously well versed with both Brew and Java, but at the same time Java has about 200,000 developers where Brew only has about 500. Why do you think that is? I think Brew had a head start, or, or, excuse me, Java had a head start in the marketplace. Um, Qualcomm is coming on very strong with Brew, and, and I think actually the two will coexist and uh, evidence of that is uh, Brew also now supports uh, a Java through a virtual machine as well. Yeah, a lot is being made of the head-to-head -head battle between the two. Why do you think that is? Well, obviously there's some parallels that people will look for. Both of them are platforms that allow the delivery of applications, but I think there's a space for both of them. Brew has been criticized for two major things. One, trying to figure out how you're going to bill for a lot of these services that you're seeing, how to price them, and also that it's temporary. How would you respond to that? Well, I think, I think uh, the Brew billing model actually has helped a lot of developers, small developers, uh, jumpstart into the market very quickly uh, because it's very well defined. I think some of the carriers are driving uh, also uh, some of the J2ME billing models, and so I, I, think, I think Brew will uh, actually, the billing model is an advantage with Brew. Tell us more about that. Well, uh, the billing model in Brew uh, allows that a majority of the revenue goes to the application developer and then uh, the carrier actually uh, has a percentage of that application price for distribution and then Qualcomm keeps a piece for doing uh, some of the application distribution and billing servicing. What about the criticism that Brew is sort of a temporary solution because it was easier to use out of the gate? Do you think it has staying power? Oh, I definitely think it has staying power. They're uh, rapidly building their base of users. And, uh, and I think Qualcomm has the power to make it a pretty significant force in the marketplace. We're very happy with it. Some other criticisms of applications like this is that there's a lot of file sharing, which is obviously very powerful, but exposes you to viruses and other sorts of things, dangers like that. What have you done to protect users against that? Well, in the Exigo application, uh, the sharing is not really that different than email or, or instant messaging. And so e users will have their own um, uh, virus protection software on their PCs, and, and that's, that's the best defense for them anyway. The promotional price for subscriptions for an application like this is as low as $6 a month. Where do you think the price will end up in the long run? Well, we're, we're going to look at the market acceptance, but I think uh, over time, Summus is going to be bringing in more value-added services. We've also recently announced ATM Finder as a service that we'll be integrating into uh, the application as well as package tracking. And so there's a, we're going to be continuing to enhance the application, making it more feature-rich. Well, I know carriers are looking for a way to get more revenue per subscriber. What do you think the tolerance level is here? You talk about some of these new features that sound neat, but will consumers really pay for them? 
Yeah, well, it's, it's all about value, right? And so if, uh, if the applications are interesting and compelling, people will pay for them. And, and Exigo is, is really only the cost of a modest lunch each month, but it gives a lot of utility to people that need to uh, you know, send and move and share files and obviously view their pictures on their phone. Thanks for sharing. Thank you very much.